This right here is Apple's new $1,300 base 13-inch MacBook Pro that finally comes with a new quad-core processor. And we're gonna connect it to the same eGPU that we previously connected to the top spec 15-inch MacBook Pro, where we concluded that adding an eGPU wasn't worth it. But as you'll see in this video, we're completely changing our mind because this $2,000 setup works like a dream. So for the eGPU system, we're using the $300 Razer Core X with a $400 Radeon Vega 64 graphics card. And combined with the new $1,300 base 13-inch MacBook Pro, that makes for a total of $2,000 for this setup compared to $3,549 for the top spec 15-inch 2019 MacBook Pro. Now of course, the 15-inch model is gonna have its high performance wherever it goes, while the 13-inch needs to be connected to an eGPU to get the performance we're about to show you in this video. But a lot of people actually prefer the portability of the 13-inch for when they're on the go, so this setup actually makes a lot of sense. Even without an eGPU, the new $1,300 13-inch base MacBook Pro actually performs very well and we'll be comparing it directly to the $1,800 13-inch Pro very soon. So if you're not already subscribed, do so now. And without further ado, let's get into performance. In Geekbench 4's graphics test, we can see that we now get a lot more graphics performance than the 15-inch MacBook Pro, now that we're using the eGPU. And in Unigen Heaven, a gaming benchmark, we're now getting almost double the gaming performance compared to the 15-inch model with Vega 20 graphics. So if you're wanting to game on your MacBook Pro, this is the perfect one to use with an eGPU. Now let's move on to some video editing tests in Final Cut Pro, which do a great job of utilizing utilizing both graphics and processor performance. Let's start with the Bruce X benchmark, which almost purely uses graphics. And as you can see, the eGPU setup is actually finishing faster than the $3,500 MacBook Pro. And now onto video stabilization of 4K footage, it's also finishing slightly faster than the 15-inch Pro, once again. And it's actually five times faster than the integrated graphics alone. So these tests were mainly using graphics performance, which we know is a lot faster on the eGPU. But now let's do some tasks that also use up a good amount of processor processing performance as well. I'd first like to mention that the top spec 15 inch MacBook Pro gets an 8 core i9 CPU, which is obviously much, much faster than the 1.4 gigahertz quad core in the $1,300 base model. But let's give it a chance, starting with editing common 4K footage with a couple of effects and LUTs added to it. This is basically what most YouTubers are gonna be editing if they're shooting in 4K. And we see here that the base MacBook Pro with the eGPU is actually not too far off from the 15 inch. So this is really impressive for paying only $2,000 compared to $3,500. And interestingly, when we previously added the eGPU to that same 15-inch Pro, it actually took longer for some reason, around the same time as the 13-inch Pro with the eGPU, so we're getting a lot more out of it. Now let's move on to some heavy-duty footage, C200 4K RAW at 60 frames per second. We actually got a massive improvement with the eGPU connected, exporting around three times as fast and not too far behind the 15-inch MacBook Pro. And not only that, but when we play back the timeline, the eGPU triples the amount of FPS we get while editing, almost as much as the high-end model alone, so it actually becomes bearable to edit this footage. And now exporting 4.5K red raw footage that's extremely processor heavy, we're actually seeing another massive improvement with the eGPU. We're still not quite at the 15 inch Pro's level, but it beats waiting over 40 minutes to export this clip. These were only a few limited video editing tests, but we're extremely surprised that we're getting this much performance out of the base $1,300 MacBook Pro with a $700 eGPU. And the biggest difference was in tasks that mainly use the graphics, like gaming and graphics rendering. So if you're doing work that's heavily dependent on graphics performance, then this $2,000 system is for you. But the most impressive thing was how we also saw a major difference in processor heavy tasks as well. And the reason for that is because the quad core processor was being held back by the limited performance of the integrated graphics. And the eGPU gave the processor all the room it needed to perform at its best. And need I remind you that this MacBook only has eight gigabytes of RAM and it's performing this well. So if you're gonna upgrade anything on this MacBook Pro, upgrade the RAM first. Absolutely don't pay $300 for the i7 upgrade. It's not gonna do much at all. So at only $1,300, I'm officially crowning the 2019 13-inch base MacBook Pro 
the best MacBook you can get if you're gonna use an eGPU, and also as the overall best value MacBook out of any MacBook we've seen in years. We've also tested a lot of eGPU systems, and this Razer Core X enclosure, combined with the Radeon Vega 64, is the best bang for the buck eGPU system we've seen. And we also have AMD's brand new Radeon 5700 XT in the office, but we won't be able to test it until we get driver support hopefully in macOS Catalina this fall. And if you're wondering how this $1,300 MacBook Pro compares to the $1,800 2.4 gigahertz model, that video is coming very soon. So if you're not already subscribed, click the circle above so you don't miss out on that video. Tap like and make sure to check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.